Tonight, shock results in the local government elections with four major Spencer Gulf cities voting for fresh faces. And locals pay their respects at Remembrance Day ceremonies to mark 100 years since the end of World War I. This is Southern Cross News with Abby Donaldson. Good evening, it's great to be back with you. There's been a major shake-up in Spencer Gulf councils after the weekend's local government elections. None of the four incumbent mayors were voted back in, with Wyala, Port Augusta, Port Pirie and Port Lincoln all set for new leadership. A region has cast its ballots and change was the message, with the four major cities set for new mayors. In while a deputy mayor Claire McLaughlin secured the top job, in a race dominated by the rivalry between incumbent Lynn Brewer and Tom Antonio. Mr Antonio led by a thousand votes after first preferences were counted, with Mayor Brewer finishing third. Her preferences swung behind Miss McLaughlin, who stormed home to defeat Mr Antonio by just 82 votes. Ms McLaughlin declined to comment until after the official declaration of results, but her predecessor has wished her well. I think she'll make a very good mayor and we've got a really good time ahead of us in Wyala, so it's good that she'll be there at the helm to steer that through. The shock result came from Port Augusta. Rising political star Sam Johnson is out, with Deputy Brett Benbow set for the top job. Both were near level after first preferences, before Mr Benbow pulled away. He says his focus will be to expand the city's offerings as a tourism destination. I really want to turn Port Augusta into a stopover. I want the tourism to really thrive here and I think we can do it. Um, and that'll help our economy and our resident base. In Port Perry, John Rohde's bad week got worse, with voters turfing him out days after a damning ombudsman's report into his trip to the Philippines. Businessman and our very own fish and tips expert Leon Stevens will take over after a comfortable win. The swing has been uh, quite a large swing, big uh, voter turnout, so I guess it was time for the region to change. In Port Lincoln, Brad Flaherty will succeed retiring Mayor Bruce Green. He he polled the most first preference votes and never looked back, winning by nearly 400 votes. I've got into a position that I've been aspiring to for the last nine months uh, because I feel that I can do a lot of good for the city of Port Lincoln. Sam Telfer will also keep his LGA president's role after being returned as mayor of Tumby Bay. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. While the police are still on the hunt for the person who stabbed a man in Wyala Stewart, police were called to a house on O'Day Street just after 7.30 yesterday morning. On arrival at the scene, they found a man with a stab wound to his back and his attacker had already fled the scene. He was airlifted to Adelaide due to the seriousness of his injuries. Inspector Mark Hubbard says they are still searching for the suspect, who is believed to be known to the victim. Local resources and local intelligence um, at the moment, uh, we've searched um, all of the addresses that we um, had intelligence that he might be at, um, but we'll continue those searches. The victim is now in a serious but stable condition and anyone with any information is asked to call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. The federal and New South Wales governments have announced $30 million in funding to build a new weir in Wilcannia. It's part of the state government's plan to improve outcomes for Indigenous basin communities. $150,000 will be spent to build a business case for the preferred site of the new weir. Initial reports suggest one may be built just over five kilometres downstream from the current one. Construction of the new weir is expected to start in late 2019. As many of the region's mayors celebrate their newfound titles, a Port Augusta Council candidate has his own success story. Just weeks after being the target of a racist video, Indian-born Sunny Singh will now get to share his ideas as a councillor of the town. As the Port Augusta manager of Dez's cabs, Sunny Singh helps run a tight ship and now he will get the chance to use those skills as a voice for the community. It was really excited moment when we find out <laughs> He was elected as a councillor along with two others after they received more than the required quota of first preference votes. Sonny taking to his social media to share his pleasing news. I have got 753 votes which are more than everyone and once again thank you very much Port Augusta community. The result comes amidst a whirlwind few weeks for the Sikh local after his election poster was at the centre of a racist online video which sparked major outrage. What am I Told you, fit in or f off. None more pleased than friend Nancy, 
who gave Sonny his first job 10 years ago. He will bring diversity in there, so he'll be bringing in a different, uh, a different perspective on things. His ideas include increasing town safety as well as more events for young people. While these aren't promises he can keep, one thing he can guarantee... My hard work and my honesty. So whatever I, I can do, I will do for my community. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. Six youths have been arrested after breaking into a Port Lincoln school. Police were called to the St Joseph's School on Mortlock Terrace at about 6.30 on Thursday night after the group was seen going through the classrooms. The youths were found nearby with items allegedly stolen from the school. The Port Lincoln boys aged 10, 11, 12 and 13 were all arrested and charged with trespass, theft and unlawful possession. Meantime, York Peninsula residents were shocked to see smoke billowing out of Kadena Memorial school yesterday afternoon. Local fire crews were called to the scene with the blaze coming from an air conditioning unit on the school's roof. It's caused an estimated $40,000 in damages. Anyone with information is urged to call Crime Stoppers. 100 years after the guns fell silent, regions across the state stopped to remember those who did not come home from World War I. Near Gallipoli Beach on the Air Peninsula, a new memorial was unveiled in their honour. The day to remember those who lost their lives in the ultimate sacrifice. Before a minute's silence, a salute from some vintage airplanes overhead. Then a pause to commemorate the guns falling silent 100 years ago, signalling the end of World War I. The service at Farm Beach on the Air Peninsula had added significance with the unveiling of a new memorial. We are just so amazed that we are able to complete what we started four and a half years ago and for all this to come together the way it has, we couldn't have wished for more. A special moment for 94-year-old guest and World War II veteran Skeet Highwood. You know, say it, my would sort have of done here. The memorial here recognises Australia's efforts in four of the many battles with Gallipoli, the Somme, Beersheba and Villers Bretonneux. While it was hoped it could be built down the road at Gallipoli Beach, where the 1981 Gallipoli movie was filmed, the Armistice Group was still proud with the result. We're quite happy with what we've ended up with. There's ten bronze plaques here, so we'd welcome anyone when they're passing out on the main highway to pop in the farm beach here and have a look at it. Case to Law, Southern Cross News. Meantime, Broken Hill's only Victoria Cross recipient has been immortalised in the form of a statue in the city's main street. Roy Inwood served his country during World War I and was awarded the VC after capturing an enemy machine gun strong post by himself. He also served as a warrant officer in World War II. Members of his family were in town to unveil the statue in front of the city's RSL branch, which is also named after the brave soldier. It's our only VC winner in Broken Hill and he stands proud and we're ecstatic we've got, eventually got him here. Engraved bricks honouring locals who are serving or have served in the armed forces will be installed at the base of the statue. Still to come tonight, the mid-north town of Borough helps a local teenager pay for life-saving brain surgery. Hello again. A man who jumped out of the dock and fled from Broken Hill Court has finally been captured. Wayne Williams escaped custody during a court date almost two weeks ago and has been on the run ever since. Police finally receiving a tip-off to his whereabouts. Uh, we've attended that home and he's been arrested with no incidents, no dramas and he's been brought back here to the police station where his bail refused. Uh, from there he's been before the courts and the courts have remanded him in custody till later this month. He's been charged with escaping lawful custody which could see him spend 10 years in jail. A rare sighting of a southern right whale and her calf has been spotted putting on a show for Port Lincoln. The pair were seen frolicking just metres from the wharf. Yesterday, spectators had a whale of a time capturing the moment. I can see a whale. Yeah, this is this fantastic. This is amazing. You never see a whale so close before. <laughs> it's an amazing area, isn't it? 
It's rare for whales to be seen in local waters this late in the year. The SA Whale Watch Centre says they hope the duo will set sail south to Antarctic waters soon. Meanwhile, a dead sperm whale was spotted off the Coffin Bay National Park on Saturday. The floating carcass has already attracted some hungry visitors with two great white sharks circling the whale. Port Pirie has been handpicked by the state government to participate in the SA Healthy Towns Challenge. It's part of the Liberal Party's election promise to improve the health and well-being of regional South Australia. $1 million to make Port Pirie a healthier and happier place. The state government has offered a grant to five regional towns in a bid to improve their way of life. To work with South Australians to keep them healthy and not just respond when they feel Fall, fall ill. It's a creative way of motivating the community to get into shape, something Port Pirie's public is in desperate need of. We have, you know, some higher levels of, of unemployment and um, we, we are on the higher level for things like obesity and diabetes. As part of the project, a grant has been awarded to Uniting Country SA for their Port Pirie Food Hub, which provides healthy food at an affordable price to financially struggling residents. Uniting Country SA hope to use the grant to better educate locals on healthy eating. We were seeing that uh, people were... Um, coming in but not knowing how to then perhaps put together a healthy low-cost meal. The community that improves the most at the end of the 12 months will be awarded the SA Healthy Towns Challenge Award. Dominic Beaton, Southern Cross News. Tourism officials say they hope to tap into a growing international market in the Flinders Ranges and Outback over the coming years. It's as day one of the inaugural Tourism Expo got underway. The Flinders Ranges and Outback is the second most visited region in the state. Domestically, numbers are strong, but for international visitors, it's not high on the bucket list. The international market has a lot of opportunity uh, with it, but uh, the majority of spend in this area is in the interstate and interstate markets. But with tourism growing by 4% globally every year, officials say they expect more overseas visitors will converge on the dusty outback landscapes. As we go into the future decade, we're going to see more and more of the Asian visitors getting out into, into this region. Tourism operators from the remote parts of the state gathered in Port Augusta today for the first ever Flinders Ranges and Outback Tourism Expo. Organisers say the sold-out event is a vital step forward for businesses to grow the region as a drawcard travel destination. For them to come together and actually spend time strategically thinking about what are the next big steps is a really incredible opportunity. It's about talking to each other uh, and getting on with the job with delivering high quality visitor experiences. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. The mid-north town of Burra has successfully raised more than $100,000 to help a local teenager pay for her life-saving brain surgery. Amelia Hocking will be flying to Sydney for surgery to remove a rare cyst growing inside of her brain. Last year, Andrea Hocking received the worst news a mother could hear. Her 15-year-old daughter, Amelia, had been diagnosed with a rare pineal cyst at the centre of her brain. The Hockings were shocked to find out the medical bill for the surgery which could save Amelia's life was in excess of $100,000. But the community opened their hearts and wallets to help Amelia's surgery become a reality. Amelia's best friend, Tia, has very kindly organised this fundraiser for Amelia tonight to help with the incidentals of Sydney. I've known Amelia for the last three years and so I've sort of seen her from the start going through everything that um, she has been going through. The family's campaign to raise the money has been a huge success and Amelia's life-saving surgery has been scheduled for December. I'm incredibly thankful with how the communities uh, come together to support Amelia, um, not just the fundraising for the surgery itself but then that little extra bit that we need. With only a month to go before the operation, the brave teen is staying optimistic. I'm extremely nervous. I'm not really thinking about it at the moment. I'm trying my hardest to be positive about it, about it all. If you would like to help support the Hockings, you can donate money on their GoFundMe page. Dominic Beaton, Southern Cross News. And in the weather, it's going to be mostly fine this week after the odd shower tomorrow. I'll have all the local weather details soon. Welcome back. 
The North Broken Hill Cricket Club have made it four wins in a row to start their local season. Patrick Reinke joins me now. And the Bulldogs bowling was what got them the win, Pat. Yeah, that's right, Abby. North found themselves in a tight spot on Saturday after Central bowled them out for 136. But the Magpies came undone at the crease thanks to an impressive North bowling attack. Chasing 137 for the win, Central lost their opening batsman early on. They found some form through the likes of Jones and Smith, but they were finding it hard to score runs. Eventually, they started to get through the gaps and even lofting a few to the boundary. However, it started to go pear-shaped once again when Jordan Vela started his spell. The spinner bamboozled a number of batsmen, almost snagging a caught and bowled in the process. His LBW of Jones soon exposed Central's tail end, and from there, North had it covered getting home to win by 41 runs. In the second game, South recorded their third win of the season, defeating West by eight wickets. Hats off to Sheldon Hall for notching a cracking 104 not out. Heading into the Spencer Gulf now, and we'll start with a quick look at Port Pirie. The game there, seeing Wandera have no problem beating a low-scoring South Port. To Port Augusta and Central Sterling had to fight hard to get past Corn, dropping five wickets, chasing 115. South retained first spot on the ladder, beating West. In Wyala, Rupina his monstrous total of 296 was far too big for South to chase. Greg Firebig top scored with 156, a sensational individual effort. The other game was a stark contrast. North could only muster 49, Central not even dropping a wicket to get the win there. Finishing off in Port Lincoln, Southern Air made it five wins on the trot against Waybacks. Charlton thumped Todd River and five wickets to Brent Harris saw Tasman defeat Lincoln South. So, Abby, some great cricket happening at the moment. There certainly is. Thanks, Pat. And time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. It was a warm and cloudy day around most centres to kick off the working week. Port Augusta reaching a max of 36 degrees, Wyala 34 the top. On the satellite, bright cloud moving over Western SA ahead of a deep trough is producing some showers. Skies are mostly clear elsewhere due to a high pressure ridge. On the waters for your Tuesday, southerly shifting southwesterly winds up to 20 knots. Seas at a metre with a south southwesterly swell, and sunrise will be at 10 past 6 tomorrow morning. Mostly sunny in the odd shower forecast for most districts tomorrow. Whaler and Broken Hill, 27 the max. Port Pirie, 30 the top. Lovely fine conditions for the rest of the week here. Cooling down too. Port Lincoln, 21 the max for Thursday and Friday. Wood now warming up to 29 degrees to end the week. After the odd sprinkle tomorrow, a mix of sunshine and cloud every day this week. Port Augusta 28 the top on Wednesday and Thursday, warming up to 31 by Friday. Wyala and Kadena, pleasant conditions in the mid-20s for the week. Mostly fine conditions from Wednesday here too. Port Pirie and Broken Hill in for a sunny 30 degree end to the week. And that's all the local news this Monday. I'm Abby Donaldson. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again tomorrow night.